Amen. Well, if you would, go ahead and take your Bible, and you can flip over to Colossians chapter 3, and that's where we'll be this morning. And as you're doing that, I do just want to say again what a great morning it is for just a graduation Sunday. I saw in first service, so I've been doing ministry for uh, close to 10 years now, and the vast majority of that was in student ministry, and and so what uh, Josh Hargett does here, and so lots of graduation Sundays. And I always love seeing these students that that came through ministry, that that came through the church, uh, stand up and to have people pray over them. But one thing I love, even to this day, is to see how God is still using them, to to see five years down the the road the impact that a church had on their lives. And I say that to say, as a church, I just want to encourage us to continue to love and care for and pour into the next generation. Because ultimately, what is going on is these students that just stood on this stage have been poured into by our people here. And we're going to send them out to different campuses. We're going to send them out into different jobs. And the hope is that God will be glorified through the lives that they live. And a lot of that can come back to the love and care and discipleship that they had here. And my hope is that just continues. My hope is that we continue to pour into, to love, to disciple the next generation so that as they go out to college campuses, as they go into the workforce, as they go into the military, they go ready with a boldness and a courage to share the good news of Jesus Christ to a lost world that desperately needs it. And so church, let's continue uh, to aim at that goal. If you have your Bibles open, we're going to go ahead and dive in uh, Colossians chapter 3. And and as we have uh, in past weeks, could we go ahead and just stand together uh, as a sign of unity as we read this word? Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Scripture says this, If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God, and set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Let's pray. Father, we are uh, thankful again for this morning. God, we're thankful for your word, we're thankful for its truthfulness. And my prayer right now, is that each and every heart in this room, including my own, is open and that it is ready to hear from you. God, I pray that whatever we need to hear today would flow into us, that we would absorb it, and that we would apply it to our lives, all for your glory. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can have a seat. So as we dive into the text, as we uh, look specifically, even at this first verse, I think there is a vital question that we have to ask ourselves. And the question is, is have you been raised with Christ? Have you been raised with Christ? And I want you, even in this moment as I'm speaking, I want you to think back even to your testimony. And I want you to think back to that moment in your life. And for some of us, we may not remember just the exact day, the exact hour, but we remember when Jesus transformed our lives. We remember the moment that we realize and we recognize that we are sinners in desperate need of a Savior. And I want us to just think about that. And even for a moment, just in the quietness of our hearts, let us just say thank you for salvation. Thank you, God, for what you have done. And there may be some in this room who right now when we say this phrase, have you been raised with Christ, you may just say, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure if I believe or I'm not really sure if I fully understand or I'm not really sure about this being raised with Jesus. I'm not sure if I fully believe that this man you call Jesus stepped out of heaven and took on the form of a human. I'm not fully sure if I believe that he walked on this earth and he lived a completely sinless life. 
And you may be in here and you may say, I'm not fully sure if I believe that he died on the cross for me and that he took on this thing that you call sin. And you may say, I'm not really sure if he rose from the grave victorious to offer new life. And if you're in this room and you would say, I'm not really sure if I have been raised with Jesus, then I just want to highly, highly encourage you. Don't leave until you at least talk with someone because we would love to have a conversation with you about Jesus and about what it means and what it looks like to be raised with Christ. And if that is our testimony, and we would say, absolutely, I have died to my old self. I have raised to a newness of life. I am a new creation, and my life is now hidden in Christ Jesus. Then we progress forward, and we read what Scripture says. And the author says, to seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And so the truth of the matter is, even if we were to look back at Colossians chapter 2, verse 20, which says, if you died with Christ to the elements of the world, why do you live as if you still belong to the world? Why do you submit to its regulations? Understand this, Christian, we are no longer a part of this world. Our citizenship is no longer here. Our citizenship is with Jesus in heaven. And we are to seek the things that are above. We are to seek things that may not even be seen in this worldly realm. We are to seek things that are holy where Christ is. And ultimately, the first point is we are to seek Jesus. And that's another question that I think we have to take serious. And that's a question that I want you to just examine in your heart and ask, what am I seeking right now? What am I seeking in this world? Am I seeking financial security? Am I, am I seeking uh, relationships? Am I, am I seeking simply health? Am, am I seeking whatever it may be, fill in the blank? And we look at those things, and, and we would never say that those are inherently evil in any way. But have they taken the place of Jesus? All semester with our college students, we just came back to this phrase and and this thought of focus back in. Focus back in on Jesus. And for some of us in this room, that's what we need to do today. Is our gaze has been taken off of Jesus and we have no longer been seeking him. And today is just as good a day as any to say, and that stops today. And I will focus yet again on Jesus. And I will run to him with all that I have. And the primary reason we need to do this is because for so many, we look at this gospel, we look at this good news, and there's something about it when we say, so you're telling me that I'm a sinner. And you're telling me that there's a price for my sin. And you're telling me that that price for my sin is death and an eternity spent in this place called hell. But there's also this place called heaven. And if I would accept this Jesus as my savior, that I would no longer spend eternity in this hell. And we would say, yes, that is the good news that you accept Jesus as your savior, but you also accept him as Lord. And that's a question that I have for you as well. Have you accepted Jesus as Lord in that you know you are in desperate need of his guidance? You are in desperate need of where he wants you to be. And have we gained minds that say, lead me, guide me, teach me? And have we answered the call as the early disciples answered when Jesus said, follow me? Have we said yes I will follow you and I will seek you with all that I have. And the truth of the matter is, especially I want to speak to our, our seniors who are graduating high school, our seniors who are graduating college, and really everyone else in this room. And most of us know this. The world is going to feed you all kinds of lies all kinds of pretty little nothings that's ultimately going to lead to destruction. 
and we're going to put our faith in man. And if we put our faith in man, then it's ultimately going to lead to disappointment because that's not what we're designed to do. But let us seek with all that we have Jesus. Let us pursue him consistently, knowing that this world is not satisfying to the fullest. And we will be disappointed. I'll give you an example. So this past Wednesday was the last Wednesday uh, for our semester in college ministry. And so we wrapped up in uh, just a fun way. We had an award show. We called it the Grandies. I know that's an incredible name. I came up with it. It was great. And it was a blast. We enjoyed it. And so throughout the time, our, our students and different things were like, so explain to me the grand, like, what are we doing? And I'm like, just think like the Oscars, think Academy Award, like think red carpet, like you need to dress to impress, like this is a black tie affair, right? And so they're like, yeah, but, but like really, what do we need to wear? And I'm like, did I not just say a black tie affair? Like we're dressing up. And part of me is like, I just wanted them to dress the best that they could. And so they're asking me like, what are you gonna wear? And I'm like, what did I say? I'm gonna wear a tux and it's gonna be great and it's gonna be awesome. And so I'm telling them all these things, and really in the back of my mind, if I'm being honest, I didn't know 100% what I was going to wear, but here's what I did know, that uh, last year I had to buy a suit for a wedding, and so I knew I had a backup in my closet. And so as we say uh, in this church, uh, life just got lifey, all good things, but just got a little busy, not in any wrong way, but enough that the day of the grandies came, and I said, well, I, I didn't, I wasn't able to rent a tux, anything like that, so I'll go and I'll get my suit. And so I wake up that morning, I get my suit down, I'm making sure it's pressed, and so I, I go to try it on and all this stuff, and there was a problem when I tried it on. Okay, first service laugh too. You don't even know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> you don't know what I'm going to say, and you're assuming things. And you're probably assuming right, because it didn't fit. And so I said, man, I blame Brad. He talks about McDonald's all the time, and I've just been craving it. So my suit didn't fit. And so I come to the Grandies, and I've got on some khaki. I mean, nice khakis, mind you, but khakis, literally a white T-shirt, because I did put on another shirt that was a button-up, and a button popped. Don't laugh <laughs> or laugh. White T-shirt, this blazer, and some white shoes. And those students looked at me with eyes of disappointment. And not only eyes of disappointment, but words of disappointment. How dare you? You've been talking for months about how you're going to... Students literally, I felt bad about this, I'm not going to lie. Like, we talk about McDonald's. Some of these students, they're barely getting McDonald's. And they went out like rented a tux. And I'm like, okay, I feel kind of bad about that one. But they felt like, dude, you told us these things and you didn't come through. And the fact of the matter is, I was like, I'm a human being and I will fail you. Like, I tell you that as a minister at this church, that, man, I want to strive for holiness with all that I have. But I would also say, don't put all of your faith and trust in me because I'm a human being. But Jesus Christ will never fail you. He'll never fail you. And so we need to seek him with all that we have. And as we seek him, that looks like so many things, just personal devotion. We dive in and we commune with him. And, and I just want to encourage you with this, just the word commune, I, I, that's just been on my mind lately. It's not just me waking up and reading the Bible. It's me communing with the Lord. It's an incredible opportunity for us. And we commune with the Lord on a personal basis. We get into small groups and we get into community groups and we talk life and we talk sin and we talk about what's going on and we seek the Lord in that. Man, we have an, an incredible church. We have an incredible church that just like we said earlier, they love and they want to pour into people. On Sundays, we gather in this room and the majority of the time, Pastor Brad is speaking to us and we have an opportunity to hear from the word there. He brings people in from time to time, has other people speak and we have those opportunities and let's not neglect them as together we seek Jesus with all that we have and we pursue him. But he goes on and I think it's important for us not to miss verse two. He says, set your mind on the things above and not on earthly things. And so there's not just a seeking that once we get there, we feel accomplished and we turn around and come back, but we set our minds there. 
And so we're not just seeking knowledge to have it, but we seek it to remain there. Where's your mindset? Where's your mindset right now in this season of life? After the the year that we have, is it set on the things above? And I'll tell you a, a great way to figure out where your mind is set is, man, how are you acting? What are the words you're saying? How are you treating people? Are you being gentle, patient, kind? Do you have self-control? Have we found ourselves being more harsh? Have we found ourselves uh, being stressed, being anxious, whatever it may be? What an opportunity we have even in this moment. Fix our gaze back on Jesus. Seek him with all that we have. Set our minds on him and allow him to take us wherever it is that he wants to. Let Jesus encompass all that we are and be all around us. Uh, I've been uh, here at at Grand just over a year. And prior to uh, being here, Katie and I lived in Hot Springs. And if you've been through Hot Springs, you may know, you may not know, there is a very small airport in Hot Springs. And I mean very small. To where when you're flying on the planes that are there, you honestly feel uh, like you're in a 12-passenger van and like that's what you're flying through the air. And we were at Hot Springs and there was a couple in our church and and they had never been to the airport and they had gone and and they were flying to Dallas and they were just telling us this story and I found it funny because they're, they say, we, we get to the airport and we go in and we are purchasing our tickets and there's a, a certain uh, man there and he's, he checks us all in, we get our tickets and he points us towards a door and he says, if you go through that door right there, we'll check your bags in. So they go through that door, they sit down, they're waiting on the next person to come up uh, to check their bags and eventually that same guy makes his way and he says, I'm here to check your bags. And they're like, okay. And so they go and they check their bags and he goes, now if you make your way right through there, that's where you will board. And so they go through a door and they sit down and there's the little boarding podium and they're waiting and lo and behold, this same individual comes and he stands behind the podium. He says, we're now boarding uh, for Dallas and you may get on. And so they get on the plane and the wife said, she looked at her husband, she said, hey, if that pilot turns around and it's him, (laughs) we are getting off of this plane and we're going. And I found that story funny But I also thought about it in this term when we look at this concept of seeking Jesus, as we look at this concept of setting our mind on Jesus and encompassing all it is that we do, that these people were going on a journey. They were going on a trip. And along the way, there was one individual that was consistently there walking with them through every phase of that trip. And oh, what it would be if we would see our lives in that way as we see our lives as just a journey that's heading for eternity, and along the way we say we just want Jesus there consistently. We want him guiding us, and we want him leading us. We want him there when we're getting our tickets. We want him there when we're checking our bags. We want him there when we're boarding the plane, and we most certainly want him flying the plane to take us where we need to go. And we say, I have such a desire to live for him. And so, yes, we seek Jesus. Yes, we set our minds on Jesus, but we live for Jesus. You've probably heard this phrase before, but I just think it's a good one. The good news is not just about behavior modification. It's about life transformation. It's not behavior modification. It is true life transformation. And understand this. God has not called you to a bondage of moralism, but he has called you to a freedom of relationship with him. It's not that we have to pursue holiness. It's that we get to pursue holiness. We get the opportunity that we do not deserve to pursue God. And to continue to shed the things of our old life that we have died to. This is what he's saying in verse 3 where he says, For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. We started out and, and we asked the question, Have you been raised with Christ? And may I promise, my true hope and prayer is that every single person in this room can answer that with a yes. And if it's a no at this moment, my prayer is that before you leave this room, it would be a yes. And for some in this room, you look at that question 
and we've talked about this gospel and we've talked about freedom from bondage and we've talked about sin and we've talked about forgiveness of sin and this Jesus who died on the cross for our sins and who rose victoriously and wants to offer us new life. And some of you may be saying, you don't know me. You don't know the things that I've done. You don't know the things that I have said. You don't know the things that I have thought. You don't know me. And as far as I'm concerned in that scenario, you're probably right. There are some in this room that I don't know the things that you have done. There are some in this room that I don't know the things that you have said. I don't know the things that you have thought. But what I do know is that Jesus was aware of every single one of those things when he died on the cross. And he took every bit of that sin that's going through your head right now upon himself and he died in your place. And he rose again to look at you and say, I love you immensely. Enough to have my life taken from me and I allowed it for the sake of you to be brought into right relationship with God. And if that is true of us, then we can look at verse three and we can sing its praises for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. As believers and followers, the good news is that even in the midst of our sin, God sees Jesus and he sees us covered in his blood, which was the payment for our sin. And even in the midst of our sin, God sees us as pure, and he sees us as righteous, and he sees us as good, and that is good news. Amen? Amen. We seek Jesus. We set our minds on Jesus. We live for Jesus as we pursue holiness, and we long for Jesus. Look at verse 4, if you would. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. I know that many times in our life we face, again, different seasons, some good, some bad. And sometimes when we're in just a bad season, we can look ahead and we know it's just a little time. And we know that there's a point coming where it's going to be over. Maybe there's a season at work and it's just brutal. But you know it's just a season, and you look at what's to come, and it helps you get through. Maybe uh, in your family life, it's just a really busy season, but you know that eventually it's going to get out, and you allow what's to come to push you through what's happening. And here's the deal, Christian. We understand that our life on this earth will not always be easy. As we strive to live faithfully for God, it's not always gonna be easy. Jesus would speak to that himself. He says, look, if the world hated me, it's gonna hate you. So one, let us not be surprised by that. But two, while we endure, while we go through the different things that this world is gonna throw our way, let us look ahead at what's to come. Let us look ahead at the glorious return of Jesus Christ. Let us know that an eternity is coming that will be spent with him and allow that to press us through whatever it is that's going to come our way, all for the sake of God's glory. Let us focus on Jesus and let us run with absolutely everything we have inside of us, cutting off every sin and hindrance, as Hebrews 12, 1 through 2 tells us, so that we can run the race that's ahead of us with endurance. Christian, what is it? What is it that's holding you back from running fully? I love talking about Hebrews 12, one through two, primarily because I love preaching it to my own soul that I've got to look and I've got to say, is there any sin holding me back? But not only sin, is there any hindrance? Is there anything that's not inherently evil in and of itself and yet it is holding me back from running with all that I have toward Jesus? Are we willing to cut that aside for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the name of Jesus, for the sake of God's glory? Let us run with endurance, longing for what is to come. Let us see through gospel lenses while on this earth. I think many of us 
have gone through different things in our life. We've gone through incredible transformations. We, we've gone through things that have truly altered who we are and will alter us uh, for the rest of our time on earth. I know uh, I was talking with a younger minister just the other day, and we were talking about preaching and different things. And, and he said, man, I wish I had more stories to tell. And I said, just wait till you have kids. You'll have more than you would ever want. And it made me think about that. And it made me think about the concept of parenting. So many of us in this room were parents and we can attest and we can say that radically altered our life forever. It'll never change. That'll never go away. Regardless of what happens, I will always be a father to Elijah and to Eden. And that's not going to change. And it did. It radically changed everything. I've heard it said uh, this way. When you have kids, you don't go on vacation. You take trips. There's a difference. <laughs> I remember Katie and I early on, one of the biggest things that we had to tackle was how do you get the sleeping kid from the car seat to the bed? And it's a journey. Early on in our marriage, we have Elijah and one of the biggest decisions we would have to make after service was, do we go to lunch today? Now, the process of that, one, can we afford it? And two, is he going to go to sleep? And I tell our, our students this all the time. You make choices all the time in life. Sometimes you make good ones and sometimes you make bad ones. I remember one morning, Katie and I just made a bad one. It was after service and we said, we're going to go to lunch. We go to lunch, we're heading home, both kids fall asleep. When we got there, I don't think I've ever felt more in sync with my wife. We were like a covert ops of like giving signs to one another of what we need to do and how we need to do it to accomplish the mission. We're walking in. I kid you not. Katie's got one kid. I put the other one down. She kicks a toy that's a noisemaker, and I dive with all that I have on that to cover up the voice box so that we can get Eden to bed, and we accomplished it. Job well done. Great job, babe. It has radically changed who we are. We were talking about Senior Sunday, knowing that that was coming up. My son Elijah is seven. In nearly 10 short years, my son will get to graduate. And he'll already be on a stage. And my prayer is that he's had a church that has poured into him, and I trust that he will. And then he's going to go off and he's going to do all kinds of things. But you know what's not going to change? The fact that I'm still his dad. I'm going to be there for him. Parenting has radically changed my life. And there's no way that I would change it for anything in the world. And even more than that, Jesus Christ has radically changed my life. And it alters how I see everything. I was telling first service, and I'm sure you've, you've heard this from me, but I always look back even to the concept of uh, just that I wear glasses and how that just completely changed how I see things. I didn't even know I needed glasses when I got them. I thought I was perfectly fine. I literally went because Katie wanted to go to the, the eye doctor. I'd never been in my life. I thought it would be fun. It was like a date. <laughs> and then the doctor had the audacity to tell me I needed glasses. I said, who do you think you are? Oh yeah, doctor, I need to listen to you. And I remember putting on my glasses for the first time and I remember radically seeing differently, not even knowing that I needed it. And so often in our lives, we may not even realize our need of Jesus in the moment. We may not even realize what's coming before us. We may not see the things that God can see and so let us look through gospel lenses at every situation in life. Let us live lives that above all else are seeking God's glory. Let us live lives, if we have been raised with Jesus, that seek Jesus, that set our minds on Jesus, that live for Jesus, and that long for Jesus. Because Brad says all the time, 100 years from now, all that's gonna matter is Jesus. Amen? Amen. For a lot of us in here, we're just walking through different stages. 
For some of us right now is just a really good season. For some of us, maybe not. And so we're gonna enter into a time of response and here's my encouragement. Every single one of us in this room can respond in some form or fashion. For, for some, the response is simply a praise and a thank you, Jesus, for the season that I'm in. For some of you, you are going through things that absolutely no one in this room knows that you're going through and you're hurting and you're in pain and you don't know what to do. And in this moment, I would encourage you, just cry out to God. If you need to stay seated and pray, pray for his guidance. If you need our prayer, I want to encourage you, there should be a red card nearby that looks very similar to this. And on that card, there's a lot of things that you can do. One thing is, is you can write out a prayer request. And so if you are walking through things that you truly just say, I just want uh, the, the pastor and, and the ministers and the staff that's just to be praying for me, we would love to. And we don't neglect that. And we do look at these. And so if you need prayer, fill that out. For some of you, you may say, I'm a believer. I've been raised with Jesus. I know that my life is, is hidden with him, but man, I, I just haven't been seeking him. I haven't been seeking Jesus. And on the back, if you just wanna write your name and on the back, just write the word seek. We'll know what that means. And we'll know that we can just contact you and we can talk with you about what that looks like. What it looks like to get your focus back on Jesus, to run with all that you have toward him. And then again, there may be some in this room that you say, this Jesus you're talking about that I'm supposed to, to know, that I'm supposed to seek, that I'm supposed to set my mind on, live for, long for, I don't know him. But I want to. And we would love to have a conversation with you. As we respond, I'll be down front, Pastor Brad will be down front, Hunter Thompson over here will be down front, and we would love for you to come down and for us to just talk with you about Jesus, to talk with you about the love that Jesus has for you. But again, all of us can respond and I hope and trust that we will. And so if I can, I wanna pray for us. Scott's gonna lead us in song and let's just respond well. Let's worship Jesus well in this moment. Let me pray. Father, you are so good. And we are, again, we just wanna say thank you. We wanna say uh, thank you for allowing us this time to come together. Thank you for the opportunity to, to sing praises through song. Thank you for the opportunity to, to read your word, to hear from it. And God, I pray that, that in the time that we have, that truth was spoken. I, I really do pray that truth was spoken, Lord. And I do pray that, that hearts received it, God. And I pray that we wouldn't just receive it, but God, that, that we would truly apply it. And that we would apply it to our lives for the sake of your glory. And it's, all, it's so incredible. Father, To even as I'm praying, I know that there's probably so many in this room right now who are praying and, and you are so big and so mighty that, that you hear each and every one of them so clearly. You hear each prayer that's going up right now clearly. And as a God who, who is so big and vast, God, I just pray that if there is anyone in this room who doesn't know you, in this moment, God, would you just work on their heart to understand their sin, to understand their need of you and understand your love for them. And God, there's, there's people in this room that again, they're, they're likely going through things that other people have no idea. And they're just hurting and they're in pain. Would you comfort them, Lord? Would you give them a boldness and a courage to seek help if they need it, prayer if they need it? Let us live as the body, unified, Lord, striving in the same direction, and that is for you and your glory. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.